All right, history here is fixing to be made. Um, they've been they've been whittling on this thing for a while now, and finally, because of I guess the consistency of it, and because it's the fair thing to do, they have decided to go ahead and do something that probably should have been done years and years ago. Please listen. It has now taken in this country. I, I want you to talk to us a little bit about this and what this moment means. Uh, it looks like the vice president has already taken to the podium. Let me interrupt you there, Jeff, and cross over to listen to her apologies. Liberation Day, <clears throat> Emancipation Day, and today, a national holiday. <laughs> across this room, I see the advocates, the activists, the leaders who have been calling for this day for so long, including the one and only Miss Opal Lee. just received a very special recognition from the President of the United States. <laughs> and I see members of Congress, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, members of the United States Senate who passed this bill unanimously. And all... All of whom, collectively, were responsible for delivering this bill to the president's desk. And I thank you all. We thank you all. Your nation thanks you all. And you know, uh, when we establish a national holiday, it makes an important statement. National holidays are something important. These are days when we as a nation have decided to stop and take stock. And often, to acknowledge our history. And so as we establish Juneteenth as our newest national holiday, let us be clear about what happened on June 19th, 1865, the day we call Juneteenth. Because you see, that day was not the end of slavery in America. Yes, on that day, the enslaved people of Galveston, Texas, learned that they were free. But in fact, two and a half years earlier, the Emancipation Proclamation ended slavery in the Confederacy. So think about that. For more than two years, the enslaved people of Texas were kept in servitude. For more than two years, they were intentionally kept from their freedom. For more than two years, and then on that summer day, 156 years ago, the enslaved people of Texas learned the news. They learned that they were free and they claimed their freedom. It was indeed an important day. And still let us also remember that day was not the end of slavery in America. The truth is, it would be six more months before the 13th Amendment was ratified, before enslaved people in the South and the North were free. So as we commemorate the history of Juneteenth, as we did just weeks ago with the history of the Tulsa race massacre, we must learn from our history and we must teach our children our history because it is part of our history as a nation. It is part of American history. So let me end by saying this. We are gathered here in a house built by enslaved people. We are footsteps away from where President Abraham Lincoln 
signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And we are here to witness President Joe Biden establish Juneteenth as a national holiday. We have come far and we have far to go, but today is a day of celebration. It is not only a day of pride, it is also a day for us to reaffirm and rededicate ourselves to action. And with that, I say, happy Juneteenth, everybody. And with that, I introduce the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. 156 years ago, 156 years, June 19, 1865, John Thanks to be here. Major General of the Union Army arrived in Galveston, Texas to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation and free the last enslaved Americans of Texas from bondage. The day, as you all know, and we repeat some of what was said, became known as Juneteenth, you all know that. A day that reflects what the psalm tells us. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Juneteenth marks both the long, hard night of slavery and subjugation and a promise of a bright morning to come. This is a day of profound, in my view, profound weight and profound power. A day in which we remember the moral stain, the terrible toll that slavery took on the country and continues to take. What I've long called America's original sin. At the same time, I also remember the extraordinary capacity to heal and to hope and to emerge from those painful moments and a bitter, bitter version of ourselves to make a better version of ourselves. And today uh, we consecrate Juneteenth uh, for what it ought to be, what it must be, a national holiday. As the Vice President noted, a holiday that will join the others of our national celebrations our independence, our laborers who built this nation, our servicemen and women who served and died in this defense. In the first new national holiday since the creation of Martin Luther King holiday nearly four decades ago, I'm grateful to the members of Congress here today, in particular, the Congressional Black Caucus, who did so much to make this day possible. I'm especially pleased that we showed the nation that we can come together as Democrats and Republicans to commemorate this day with an overwhelming bipartisan support of the Congress. I hope this is the beginning of a change in the way we deal with one another. We're blessed, we're blessed to mark the day in the presence of Miss Opal Lee. As my mother said, God love her. I had the honor of meeting her in Nevada more than a year ago. She told me she loved me and I believed it. <laughs> I wanted to believe it. <laughs> so you're incredible. A daughter of Texas, grandmother of the movement to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. And Ms. Opal <clears throat> is, uh, you won't believe it, she's 49 years old. <laughs> or 94 years old. But I, you are an incredible woman, Ms. Opal. You really are. As a child growing up in Texas, she and her family uh, would celebrate Juneteenth. In Juneteenth, 1939, when she was 12 years old, the white, a white mob torched her family home. But such hate never stopped her any more than to stop the vast majority of you I'm looking at on this podium. Over the course of decades, she's made it her mission to see that this day came, 
It was almost a singular mission. She's walked for miles and miles, literally and figuratively, to bring attention to Juneteenth, to make this day possible. I ask once again, we all stand and give her a warm welcome to the White House. As they still say in the Senate, and I said for 36 years, if you excuse me for a point of personal privilege, as I was walking down, I regret that my grandchildren aren't here. Because this is a really, really, really important moment in our history. By making Juneteenth a federal holiday, all Americans can feel the power of this day and learn from our history and celebrate the progress and grapple with the distance we've come, but the distance we have to travel, Jim. You know, I said a few weeks ago, marking the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre, great nations don't ignore their most painful moments. Great nations don't ignore their most painful moments. They don't ignore those moments in the past. They embrace them. Great nations don't walk away. We come to terms with the mistakes we made. And in remembering those moments, we begin to heal and grow stronger. The truth is, it's not simply not enough just to commemorate Juneteenth. After all, the emancipation of enslaved black Americans didn't mark the end of America's work to deliver on the promise of equality. It only marked the beginning. To honor the true meaning of Juneteenth, we have to continue toward that promise because we've not gotten there yet. The Vice President and I and our entire administration and all of you in this room are committed to doing just that. That's why we've launched an aggressive effort to combat racial discrimination in housing. Finally address the cruel fact that a home owned to, to this day by a black American family is usually appraised a low rate for a similar home owned by a white family in a similar area. That's why we committed to increasing black home ownership, one of the biggest drivers of generational wealth. That's why we're making it possible for more black entrepreneurs to access, to access capital because their idea is good, they lack the capital to get their fair and get their fair share of federal contracts so they can begin to build wealth. That's why we're working to give each and every child three and four years of age, not daycare, but school, in a school. That's why... That's why we're unlocking the incredibly creative and innovation, and innovation of the history of our historical black colleges and universities, providing them with the resources and best in research centers and laboratories to help HBCU graduates prepare and compete for good paying jobs in the industries of the future. Folks, the promise of equality is not gonna be fulfilled until we become real, becomes real in our schools and on our main streets and in our neighborhoods. Our healthcare system and ensuring that equity is at the heart of our fight against the pandemic. And the water that comes out of our faucets in the air that we breathe in our communities, in our justice system, so that we can fulfill the promise of America for all people, all of our people. And it's not gonna be fulfilled so long as the sacred right to vote remains under attack. We see this assault from restrictive laws threats of intimidation, voter purges, and more. An assault that offends the very democracy, our very democracy. We can't rest until the promise of equality is fulfilled for every one of us in every corner of this nation. That, to me, is the meaning of Juneteenth. That's what it's about. So let's make this, this very Juneteenth tomorrow 
the first that our nation will celebrate all together as one nation. Wow. A Juneteenth of action on many fronts. One of those is vaccinations. Tomorrow, the vice president will be in Atlanta on a bus tour helping to spread the word like all of you have been doing on life-saving vaccines. And across the country this weekend, including here in Washington, people will be canvassing and hosting events in their communities, going door to door, encouraging vaccinations. We build equity into the heart of the vaccination program from day one, but we still have more work to do to close the racial gap in vaccination rates. The more we can do that, the more we can save lives. Today also marks the sixth anniversary of the tragic deaths of Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Killer, motivated by hate, intending to start a race war in South Carolina. He joined his victims in a Bible study class, and he took their lives in a house of worship. It's a reminder that our work to root out hate never ends, because hate only hides. It never fully goes away, it hides. And when you breathe oxygen under that rock, it comes out. That's exactly right. I remember the sixth year anniversary of what he's talking about pertaining to the church assassination, just like it was yesterday. David and I prayed about it together, and I brought in a Confederate flag and I marked the flag, put the date on it, and David and I took the back off of the American flag that flowed over my father's casket, his military American flag, and stuffed the Confederate flag up underneath the American flag and said, from this day on, we're going to have a different perspective about the Confederate the Confederate strong ha stronghold that took place in this country that planted a seed of hate that to this day is still being cultivated and manifested even right here in Northwest Tennessee because I guarantee you there will be people that will watch this tonight or in the morning that will object to this just like objecting to a brand new tax bill because their heart is that far away from the sense of duty towards what actually needs to be done towards, towards turning a wrong into a right. Like I said a while ago, this needed to be done years ago. Years ago. Towards understanding what America went through during the time of slavery. During the time of treating human beings like they was nothing more than animals. And I hate to say it because my own people my great-grandfather, Jeff Jackson, was a part of that movement towards trying to stuffle out the black race because the black race was becoming too flamboyant to the point that some white girl wanted to have a relationship with a black boy, but instead of punishing the white girl, they punished the black boy. These unjustfulness undoes need to be undone and redone in a proper way of us, like Mr. Biden said, remembering the past, not to fester it, not to throw salt into wounds, but how that we can heal from the past. That's the reason why that I continue to make all these YouTube channels and I keep talking about these people in this area. They think that I'm trying to rub salt into wounds. They think that I'm trying to get back at him. They think, oh, he's got an axe to sharpen. Trust me, if I had an axe to sharpen, I never would have come back to 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 38255. I would have abandoned and forsaken 
these people towards letting them waller around in their own corrupt hypocrisy. But instead, I come back to try to help. I come back to lead. I come back to try to enlighten. I come back to be persecuted. I come back to be attacked. And I had no idea that it's one thing to attack me, but for them to attack my brother at the age of 51 to the point that they literally, emotionally drove him to a nervous breakdown and a, and a, and a death like they did. I hope that these people now are satisfied that they continued on until they brought a death to our family illegitimately simply because we could not get the courts to stand in and on our behalf. These people around here, as far as I am concerned, they're 20, at least 20, possibly 50 years behind time of where they should be, not only in education, but in ethics and in learning what is fair and what is not fair. 30 plus years ago, I told them that they needed to legalize marijuana. They demonized me because of it. They dehumanized me because of it. And to this day, the people in the state of Tennessee still holds that against me. Even though there's been something like 20-something states now that has legalized medical marijuana. In addition to those that has legalized it for entertainment purposes the same way as George Dickel or Jack Daniels or Wild Turkey. I don't believe in legalizing it for those purposes, but if the masses decide that that's what they want to do, then that's what they'll do. But the fact of the matter is these heathens here in this state still find it more appealing to tuck money under their whatever you want to call it in making money illegitimately in the black market and allowing for little Sally and little Johnny to be exposed to marijuana and plus other drugs at some of them five, six, seven years old, these people will have a great deal to give an account one day once they stand in front of the master. And the master asks them, how come you done what you done? How come you didn't do what you knowed that you should have done? And to this day, I still don't get any type of reconciliation over what has occurred. So I'm going to be like the black woman that they just got through mentioning that has been so steadfast in trying to see that this bill got passed before the American legislation. I'm going to long for the one day when I shall hear a heavenly host saying about the heavenly jubilee that one day we will all who is permitted who is considered acceptable will have a hoopla in heaven for seven whole years while we are being rewarded and given our rewards that there will be a celebration in heaven during the time that they're suffering so severely down the planet pertaining to the great tribulation, that will be the time of the jubilee whenever we will come together as saints of God, as the elect, and we will have one of the greatest jubilees known unto the history of society since the beginning of society. That's what I long to see and hear one day to hear my heavenly Father say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done. Come, enter into the joy of the Lord. I'm so glad that today has happened. A today that needed to be done years and years ago in recognizing the hardship that fell upon to a society of people that has just as much of a heart, 
just as much of red blood going through their veins, just as much of a good mind, just as much of a soul, just as much of a spirit as the white man or the red man or the European man or the Frenchman or the Mexican man or any other man. Because we are all equal in the eyes of the law, in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the law at the bottom of the cross pertaining to God's holy divine law. We are all equal in that sense. And if anybody thinks that they are superior because they are red, yellow, black, white, or whatever color, it just shows you the idiocy of how far behind that they truly are in that type of ideology. Two thumbs up, Mr. Biden, in performing your duties as a United States president. That's what we must understand that Juneteenth represents not only the commemoration of the end of slavery in America more than 150 years ago, but the ongoing work they have to bring true equity and racial justice into American society, which we can do. In short, this day doesn't just celebrate the past. It calls for action today. I wish all Americans for the future. Juneteenth. I'm certainly going to, in a moment, going to sign the law, making it a federal holiday. And I have to say to you, I've only been president for several months, but I think this will go down for me. It's one of the greatest honors I will have had as president, not because I did it, you did it. Democrats and Republicans, but it's an enormous, enormous honor. Thank you for what you've done. And by the way, typical of most of us in Congress and Senate, uh, I went down the other end of the hall first and thanked your staffs because I know who does the hard work. Yeah. <laughs> now they're down. They're the other end. But I thank them as well. And God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you. Now, I'd like to invite up while I sign Senator Tina Smith, and Senator Ed Markey. Let's move this forward real quick. Thank you. <laughs> A very historical moment for not only America but for the world.
four o'clock in New York. We are back at the table today. We just witnessed President Biden, President Biden signing a bill making Juneteenth a commemoration of the end of slavery in the United States, a national holiday. It is the first new national holiday since 1983. The push to make it a holiday gained momentum amid the racial reckoning after the murder of George Floyd and culminated with unanimous support in the U.S. Senate and dear unanimous support in the House. It was the president's first public event since returning from his trip to Europe, and he returns to Washington with a little bit of wind at his back, thanks to a win handed to him from an unlikely source, the conservative majority U.S. Supreme Court. Yep, you heard that? To my viewers, I want to end by saying this. The reason why now, I hope that you understand or can see the reason why that I decided to put George Floyd on a cornerstone out here at the Purple Heart Memorial at 291 Thompson Road, along with some of the other ones who have been illegitimately, their lives has been taken. Now I hope that you can see the reason why that George Floyd's name on that cornerstone meant so much. Because in that movement, it has transpired into what you just got through witnessing towards a historical, historical fact that hasn't been done since 1983 here in America. And like I said a while ago, I'm sure that there'll be lots of people that will despise it and they will look upon it towards it being some sort of, of uh, wrongdoing. No, the wrongdoing began back in the 17 and the 1800s whenever people allowed for such ungodliness and brutality to ravage the land the way that it did just like the wrongdoing towards trying to genocide not just the Jews but also the Indian the Native Americans there are certain things that the world needs to evolve into and this is one of them towards recognizing the past. Not to rub salt in the wounds, but so we can get over it and move on. You learn from your mistakes so that you won't have to repeat them again and again and again. Good luck to all of us and shalom coming from the Windmill Ministries. Thanks again and good luck to all of us. God bless and God bless America. Shalom.